A lot of one of the things that they say is because in the book of Acts, the first day of the week, they got together and they was they used that. But the, we got to go with what the the law says. Right. Read that. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 2. Bring it up. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. So it says proclaim to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord which shall be holy convocations. What are some of these? What is the feast? Even these are my feasts. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done. So six days shall work be done. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. What's the Sabbath? The seventh day. Which is? Saturday. Saturday. It's, this is the day of rest. Read. Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. A holy convocation. So on a Sabbath day, you know what a convocation is? A convocation is a gathering. So on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, that's the day we're supposed to be gathering together. Not Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. But look at this. You see this? John Smith started the Baptist Church in 1608. What is the common what is the common thing you see about all of the originators of these different religions? You don't know? John, exactly. That's the common denominator. Everything even even you I know you're not you're you're a Christian, but Islam white man but a lot of our people follow after that as if it's our religion and then look at the dates 1608 1830 1863 1872 all of those are very new religions this bible outdates all of it that's right meaning that what this bible says is law not what they say in their churches because what they say in their churches is the precept of men they're not teaching you god's laws because going to the christian church that's not repentance Right. That's right. Gotta tell it to you straight. That's not repentance. They heal you a little. Give me that in Jeremiah. So listen to this real quick. This is what's going on when you go into the Christian church. Because you probably changed your life when you start. How long have you been going to Christian? How long have you been going to church? Basically, like three years. Like three years. And in three years, you probably changed a little bit. You changed some things that you used to do that you don't do no more, right? I, I, I got the same. I got the same background. In seven years, I changed a few things. But when I seen this history and I seen this, I'm like, I've been lied to, and you, you're being lied to. That's right. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter six, verse fourteen. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. So it says they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. That's why a lot of a lot of our people turn to Christianity because they heal you a little bit. It makes they tell you some feel good things when you change a little bit, but ultimately they leading you down to a destruction. That's the the Christian church is the blind leading the blind. That's right. If you if you don't come up out of that, and I'm, I'm, I want you to take it very seriously. If you don't come up out of that and start keeping God's commandments, you're gonna get put to death. Teach. Bring it out. Harsh, but it's the truth. That's what the Bible teaches us. Cause you know you know about you, you you're familiar with the Bible, so you know what destruction they talk about. Finish that up. Verse fourteen: They have healed also the hurt of my of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, "Peace, peace, where there is no peace." So they tell us at every Sunday, week after week, they tell us it's peace. They praying against the cold coronavirus. They praying against the hurricanes when they come. But yet, destruction is still hitting the earth. Destruction is still running rampant. Our young men still being shot down in the streets. These things are still happening because they're not teaching you the truth of God's word. They're not teaching you the prophecies that's entailed in the Bible. You understand? So make sure you get in contact with us. All right. Y'all right. have a good one. So this image of Christ was uh, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. And it's a multitude most, most of books that actually show those images, that show them painting over our images, painting them where they, into the white man. Because you already, you already, say so you already heard that, the description of Christ. You said slightly. So we're going we're gonna to read that first, and then I'm going to go to, uh, we're going to get that image of the beast. Let's, de let's read that in Revelation 1 and 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white. Verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, 
So it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is the word, what is the root word of revelation? To reveal. So the revealing, so we can, this says the revealing of Jesus Christ. Read. Let's jump to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the revealing of Jesus Christ, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So this is a this is a more accurate description. So the hairs of his head were white like wool. He got white woolly hair. This, nah. Nowhere, nowhere to be found in the Bible. Read. As white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. It says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The, the eyes, his eyes are a flame of fire because he drunk wine. When you, when, you, when you drink wine, the whites of your eyes turn red. So that's what it said. The, 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 his eyes were as a flame of fire. And we read that in Genesis chapter 49. Let's get that. Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. So this is this is Tom. This is a prophecy talking about Christ. It says, "His eyes shall be red with wine." That's his eyes being red as a flame of fire. Read Revelation chapter one verse fifteen. And his feet like unto fine brass. So it says, "And his feet like unto fine brass." What color is brass? It's a brown. It's a derivative of a brown. Now, unless you have some type of disease or ailment, are your feet the same color as the rest of your body? They may be a little lighter because the rest of your body is exposed to the sun, you get darker. But overall, your feet are the same color as the rest of the it says your, his feet, read it again. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like fine brass. So Christ was a black man. Now it says he's a black man, but how black was Christ? Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So any, you, anything you burn in a furnace, what happens to it? It gets darker. So he was a very dark-skinned man, which is in this description. This, this is a more accurate description. This ain't nowhere near a description of Christ. Psalm chapter 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So these other nations have taken crafty counsel against us. Part of that crafty counsel is painting this image of Jesus saying that this is Jesus and putting it all over, all around in these Bibles. A lot of the Bibles you open up, you open up to the first page and what you see? White Jesus. But then when you look through the, when you look through the Bible, front to cover to cover, this description ain't nowhere in there. And you know what excuse they use? Oh, it, uh, Jesus ain't got no color. It don't matter what color he is. Just believe in him. But yet, in 1502, this was painted as a part of this right here. Read it again. They have taken crafty oh, call it a read. Psalms, chapter 83, verse 3. Bring it out. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So the Bible says they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Those that are taking crafty counsel against us is your so-called white man, the so-called Chinese man, so-called Japanese, the African. They have taken crafty counsel against the, today together. It's not just the white man, they all together. The white man is the main one, but they all together. They taking crafty counsel, what? To keep us in sin. That's to right. keep us down where we won't thrive like we're supposed to. Teach. If we was keeping God's laws. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. It says they consulted against thy hidden ones. Why would the Bible say that we are the hidden ones? Because today we don't know, we don't, what we calling ourselves today? Blacks, Hispanics, um, Salvadorian, Mexican, Puerto Rican. We calling ourselves all these other names that would not, that on the a, on a surface, you wouldn't think to look in the Bible to find us in there. Because you're not going to find Puerto Rican in the Bible. Teach. You're not going to find Mexican in the Bible. You're not going to find African American, black, colored. You're not going to find none of those names in the Bible. But through the through the um, the curses, that's how we are able to then identify that we are the Israelites. That's right. That we are the ones that God chose. Read what you got. And that's that's why it's saying that we are the hidden ones because we are the ones that don't know who we are. Read. They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be in no more in remembrance." Because a lot of times when we say Israel, a lot of people don't know what we're talking about. If we say that you're an Israelite, no, nah, I'm a Christian. No, nah, I'm a Baptist. 
This is part of that crafty council. They put this image, yeah, we read that. We put, they put this image in place so that when we look to the Bible, we don't see ourselves. We look at, because when, when you're growing up, they put this in our face so much that growing up, when, when somebody say Bible, you say this. Somebody say God, you think this. So you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even think to relate yourself to the Bible because this is the image that pop up in your mind. Read what you got. Job chapter 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Do you know who the, who the wicked is? Let's get that. Malachi 1. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who is that wicked that the Bible is talking about? Who is that wicked? Read. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. So this is referring to Edom. Edom is the so-called white man. So it says they are the border of wickedness. I mean, when you think of wickedness, it started with them. They are the ones that started wickedness in this, in this earth. Teach. Go back to Job. Job chapter 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who is ruling every, who is ruling this world right now? Bring it out. Huh? Yeah, because everywhere you go, he is. In Russia, Europe, he taking over, he take, he's still taking over, the, he taking over every country, he got his foot in it. Teach. Every single country, the so-called white man got their foot in it. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. It says he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. This is where you get this image from. To scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.